this is Electrics video number two, and what we're going to do in this video is look at adding our switching arrangements to uh, connecting to our lights and adding our symbols. So here we've got a general layout, and on the insert symbol library, you can see you've got a choice on the circuits that you enter. So for example, if I wanted to put light switches in, I can select the light switch. I then select this little insert button up here. While I've got the um, the symbol on the end of my mouse, I can pan, but what I can't do is zoom in. I can also do a right button click, and you'll see then I can place the symbol. These give me att attributes for part number, manufacturer, unit cost. I don't want to see this again. These will appear in the schedules um, and bills of quantities. I can suppress this message by don't show this again. And there's my next light switch on the end of my mouse. So I can place that one. What I'm going to do is going to press escape. I zoom in a bit and I'll insert another light switch. And you can see them right button click to rotate. And I'll do another right button click to rotate that one. I press escape then I could put a movement sensor in so let's say we had some movement sensors in there's a little vestibule so I can add those in motion detector put one there place one there pressing escape to add different symbols if you want to put some sockets in um, while I'm on this part of the layout I can put some sockets in so insert on the symbol library going into the insert symbol into power selecting the type of socket that I want Two gang switch socket, pressing the insert button. Again, you get your symbol, right button click to rotate it, place it on the layout. If when placing things like sockets or um, any other items, you can reveal any other services. So if I went to display options, prior to putting those sockets in, I could go to show services and show my piping and see whether there's any radiators in front of my socket circuits. So you can see there the radiators appear. Doesn't appear to be a problem with those radiators. And I could go back to display options and switch those off. So sometimes it's worth having the other services shown when you place items. Um, there's no hard and fast rules about placement of items. You can work on a part of a drawing and put as many different symbols as you like down. Um, or you can just put each of one type of symbol, finish with that command, and then revisit and add all your symbols of another type. So the next thing I'm going to do is show how I would add in a lighting circuit to the lighting and power board. So here you can see we've got these spotlights, light switch, movement sensor, and we've got our lighting and power board. So in order to add circuits, we need to select the board first of all, so it's the board of interest. If you can't see the board on the layout, you'll get a little message in the corner here saying, use right button click menu. If you do the right button on your mouse, that will give you a tear off sheet in the middle of the screen with a list of your boards, select the board, and that will then present you when you select insert switching with a board diagram. So there's your representation of the board L1, L2, L3, and your ways. You select your way from the list by merely clicking in the list. The phasing arrangement is determined by this little dialog in the corner here. So if it's my intention to add these lights to L1, way number one, going up to the top, I select way number one, I select L1 brown, select OK, and then what I do, I click once on each of my light fittings with one click. This then connects the fittings together, and this will look at the circuit wattages from the lighting database that was used in the lighting program. Click once on the switch, and that then gives me my current rating, 0.9 amps, on that way number one. L1 circuit. I've now connected that in and you can see here you're getting your circuit reference. Lighting and power, that's the board reference, way number one, L1. Now to put my cable length in, again I could go around the layout and put all my light fittings in if I wanted to and then decide on the cable lengths. While I'm here on this section of the, of the, of the layout it just makes good sense to actually apply my circuits um, while I can see them. So what I'm going to do is also to assist me in the arrangement of the, the circuits, I can add it in my containment. Now you might have this containment as part of a DXF file. So you can run your containment by clicking, and then I can double click on the last bit of containment. You can see here the orthogonal is out a bit and it's not very tidy, so I can click on it once, it goes purple, press delete on the keyboard. I then set my orthogonal in the bottom right corner, the orthogonal wasn't set, so I can set it. And then what I can do is go and repeat that process 
make a better job of it, keeping you orthogonal. If I wanted to continue on with conduit to somewhere, I would just select conduit, click on the end of the run, and then decide to run my conduit to a position somewhere. So if later on I'm going to put a split system in that office, I'll just run a bit of conduit down to there. And when I put my split system in as a load, I can add that in. So now I can connect my circuit to my light switch in terms of the cable length. Now, before we do this, there's a status report you can apply. On the display menu, you've got unconnected loads and unmeasured circuits. So we've got these lighting circuits connected up and they're in green. If I select unconnected loads, you can see all of these lights are now purple. So that this means when you revisit the layout, if you're not sure on the status of the, of the system, you can see the purple color representing circuits that are unconnected. With light fittings, it's fairly obvious because you've got the cable between them. You also have unmeasured circuits. So again, if I click on the unmeasured circuits option, you can see these, these are in orange. So this circuit and all of these are still un, unmeasured because they haven't even got connections to them. So this gives you the status of the, um, the process that you're going through. So now I'm going to add a circuit from the lighting and power board to the light switch via the movement sensor because it might well be associated with this circuit. So what I do, I select the board, I then insert cable lengths, I select my board and then on the cable lengths dialog box I put in the vertical distance off the board. Now I can top these up at the end if I want to. When we complete the circuit it'll give us the, 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 the circuit length in the room and the, and the cable length and we can adjust those as well. So all I then do is follow the routing of the trunking and containment. I might then want to route up to my movement sensor because it's associated with this circuit back on myself across to here and then double click on the lighting switch and that gives us a measured length which is from the board via the containment via the movement sensor to the switch of 8.2 meters and a lighting length within the room of 10.7 meters and then selecting OK and that's now connected up our circuit. If I wanted to do a ring main it's the same but I need to allocate these to my board first of all. So again, I need to go down to the lighting and power board, insert switching, select the way and phase that I want to put the ring main on. So I'm going to say L3 gray. And while you're setting your board up, you've got a little slider bar here at the bottom here, you get the total of your board. So as you're building your board together, you can try and balance it as best as possible. So I'm going to go for L3 gray. Okay, that I then click once on each socket. Double click to complete the circuit. That basically tells the program to finish that particular run. And that provisionally gives you a 20 amp load on that circuit. Now later on in the wiring program, you can say it's 32 amp ring main, it's got RCDs and all the rest of it. All of that is done in the wiring program. You just get a provisional load of 20 amps here because likely it's not in this, it might be a radial. I now need to allocate the cable length to these um, sockets as well. So the same procedure as before. Click on the board, cable lengths, select my board, set my vertical distance that I'm rising and add that in and then follow that containment run. So I might decide I'm going to drop here to, to skirting level, add that in, click this socket. You don't have to select every socket. All you do is put your real intended cable route in. So if I'm at skirting level, I want to run around to this socket here. All I would do is into the corner here and then just double click on that final socket. And you see it gives me a measured length of 28 meters, but it does work out a return length horizontally and vertically to the board of 17 meters. Now, if it's a ring main, a proper ring main, you can actually put the same return length in there if you wish. Or if you do want a, a shorter route back, you can adjust that return length and then select OK there. And then cancel the cable lengths option. So these now have cable lengths associated with them. So that when you go to the switching, and select the board again you have a cable lengths option you can see here it puts the cable length against each of these circuits if it's a three phase load then what it will do it will put in um, a cable length on the lead phase so for example if i was to put a fan core unit in this lecture room here i would use the stationary equipment option and perhaps i might run it from the hvac board so what i would do this time i would select the hvac board but first of all I need to put the symbol in to represent the load. So if I insert symbol and select stationary equipment, I then place the stationary equipment load 
give it a description other AC systems are available and I'll make that a 20 amp load balanced or unbalanced so you can tick the box and decide on what you want okay that that now applies a load so now I've got to apply the load to the board so I select my HVAC board I insert switching I select the weigh-in phase EPN, OK that, click on the symbol, and that applies my 20 amps across all three phases. Cancel. So that's now got a 20 amp load. Again, allocating the cable lengths to the board, selecting the board, cable lengths, select the board, and then run your cable down to your clients. And I might have a couple of rises and drops totaling three meters. So now when I go into the HVAC board and I go to switching, you can see here the 16 and a half amps is allocated on the initial phase. Again, if I click OK there, that's with a view to adding another circuit. So unless you move on to another circuit, you are going to get this, this dialog box telling you you've already got something on there. Now what we can also do is reveal other services. So if we've done some pumps, and pipe layouts, etc., in the piping program or fan core units even, in display options on show services, I can show the piping. And this will reveal all of my circuit loads. So if I've got some pumps on the layout, for example, I could insert some circuits on items I've already got placed. So for example, if I want to allocate one of these pumps to a specific circuit, all I need to do is insert switching. So I'll go to my HVAC board again, insert switching, and I want that pump number two on L2 black. Click on that. Double click on the pump to reveal the load. So that load was entered when the pumps were entered in the piping program. Select OK. And that then gives you a load on that particular circuit of 10 amps. And again, we would run the cable in exactly the same way. So if any services have been added in the piping or the ducting program or public health, pumps, etc., gas solenoid valves, even motorized valves, if, the, if they are motorized, you will get a symbol. You can then click on the symbol reveal and that will pass the load into the electrics program. So this then allows you to build up a picture of all of your services on the layout as you build the system up.